I'm working in Africa, so I'm forever and sometimes overwhelmingly aware of the inequities that there are. I work with people groups in our churches who are largely immigrants or children of immigrants. My middle class Cameroonian neighbors view people from the neighboring country, whom I work with in the churches, as thieves, categorically for the most part. Okay, some of them are thieves, but certainly not all. And I cannot defend them as a group, but when something comes up, I can challenge a neighbor on their assumptions in a particular situation. How does this manifest itself? What does it actually look like day to day? Those who are looked down on, kind of, kind of put aside by the general population, then will stick to themselves, not being part of the, the greater society in terms of education level, in terms of language and, and other factors, pushes them, the immigrants even more to stay in their own communities. Now that makes sense. If you don't speak another language well, or if you're having to work together in a language that's not the native language for either of you, it gets complicated. The problem comes in where one group feels that they are more important or of more value than another, or they start criticizing another. When you go to visit ladies in their homes, what, what sort of interaction do you, do you see between them and their husbands? I have a small group of African Christian ladies with whom I visit Muslim homes. The ways in which these ladies are treated as lower class in their own homes, in their own culture, in their own religion is, is amazing. They are sometimes not educated. The girls might not be educated, although the boys were. And then when they're married, they are not just subject to, but ruled by their husbands, very limited choices about what they can do in life. So even to get a visit from us, they're happy, they're welcoming. I think it raises their status in their own eyes. And some of them are learning to read. Those who are learning to read are hugely appreciative and they're, they're very proud of themselves. What are some of the best things we can do to combat prejudice? After prayer, I think the best thing to do is go and spend time pe with people of the other group. We talked about going to, to visit people, spending time with people, visit homes, find, finding out what, what their life is like. And God shows you ways to, to meet needs when you do that. And it goes both ways too. Letting people help you is also an equalizer. I found that if someone is in a, an oppressed or disadvantaged group and they want to do something for me, even if I could do it myself, I think, it's good to let them help me because it's in a way blessing them to let them help. Also, sometimes we need their help more than we realized, especially in a cross-cultural situation. What do you wish people in United States churches could know uh, about what it's like to live with these tensions in your setting? People tend to keep apart and, and need to make an intentional effort to go talk to the person who's different. And often they're in the neighborhood or in the child's school. Let's invite this family over. Let's, you know, just make that, that initiative to interact. And they could invite people over for a meal, take a gift to a neighbor, take cookies to a neighbor even, something simple as that.